here. What noise do potatoes make? Oh, hello. Hi, welcome. It's been a while, huh? <laughs> welcome to the channel. My name is Cassandra and this is where I talk about my life experiences and lessons learned to try and help other people who might be in similar situations. If that sounds interesting, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. It's the start of August right now. I haven't recorded anything in about a month. I thought I had recorded something before I had the SARP surgery and I appear to either have deleted it or imagined the whole thing. But never mind, it was just a short update video anyway, the contents of which I can very briefly cover in this video which is a four week post op update <laughs> so i had a sarp surgery four weeks ago you can watch the other videos about that in the playlist that i have all about my sarp and drug surgeries uh, i'll be covering different things about the surgery in this video you can check out the chapters or the description to see what the different topics are first thing you'll notice is that I have a gap in between my teeth and I'm also slurring and lisping naturally that's because of this surgery and this procedure but let's not get ahead of ourselves okay so the first thing I want to talk about in this video is just a quick update then on the um, palatal expander um, or the rapid palatal expansion device um, that I have in um, I had made a video about molar brands and how it was really, really sore when I had the mold made for this device. Um, and I was very nervous about how it would be once it was the real device and if it would be so sore the whole time. I'm very pleased to report that the actual um, expansion device, which still uses molar bands, is a lot more comfortable than uh, the molar bands that I had put in temporarily just to make the mold so putting it in was still a little bit painful but not half as bad as before um i had the device put in the day before i had the surgery and it's not really been causing me any pain since it was installed although it is quite inconvenient and <laughs> um, so as i say i'm still slurring and lisping i haven't really talked that much in the last month just because I didn't really want to. I'm neurodivergent and there are a lot of times where I don't want to talk or where I'm non-verbal, but just because of, you know, having to go to work every day and whatever, I'm kind of, I don't get the luxury of doing what I feel like in terms of not talking, but during this recovery, I realized actually how often I would prefer to not talk. So what I'm getting at is that I don't think it's that it takes so long to stop slurring and lisping with this device. I think it's just that I probably haven't had as much practice as you would expect over the last four weeks because my preference has been to not talk. It's also pretty inconvenient when eating, uh, but let me get onto that later, okay? So the device doesn't really hurt. Now about the surgery itself. Um, I had that about four weeks ago and the surgery generally went quite well um so very happy about that um i think it took about two hours um to do the surgery and i was very pleasantly surprised that when i woke up my lips were totally fine i've seen a lot of pictures where people come out of jaw surgeries and their their, their whole lips and the face will be really swollen bleeding cracked everywhere like totally just like ripped up that was not the case for me at all. Um, I also have chronic eczema, so I was quite nervous about how that would be because you can't put anything on your face before you go in for the surgery to kind of moisturize and protect it. So I was really nervous about that, but I did tell the doctors about it, so maybe they were extra careful. Um, so that was really nice. Also, I didn't have any discomfort around the nose or nostrils, and um, which is, was a pleasant surprise because obviously with it being jaw surgery, they can't put a mask over your face to give you like anesthesia or oxygen. They have to um, do intubation through the nose um, to give you those things instead. So I was expecting that to be 
um, quite painful afterwards, but the nose is totally fine. What wasn't totally fine though, what was really, really sore for a good while uh, was my throat. I'm not sure why or how that worked out, but again, it would have been because of the intubation, um, but it was very, very red and swollen for at least two weeks afterwards. Um, I will publish another video soon about things that I wasn't expecting about SARP where I will go into more detail about that aspect of it but for now uh, that's all I'll say on that. Um, also you'll see from the pictures that I had these tapes on my face. Um, people have been asking me about that with the pictures that I posted and um, that was something that the surgeon offered to help with the swelling. And they said that they don't know why, but they found in their experience with, pa with patients and in the research that when you use these kinesio tapes, it seems to just really help to um, reduce and prevent the swelling, which for me, that does seem to be the case. I kept the tapes on. I'm sorry, there's a dog barking outside. I don't know if you can hear it, um, but I kept the tapes on for about five days and the swelling was very, very minimal the whole time. There still was swelling, um, but it wasn't so much to actually make me feel uncomfortable. Uh, the skin wasn't like super, didn't feel super stretched or anything like that. So I think that was effective. It worked out well for me. People have been asking me like, can I get those tapes? What are they called? Whatever. Um, they're kinesthesiology tapes, which you can buy. But I would not recommend just buying any old tapes and just putting them on yourself unless you know about them because you can get different um, strengths and different types of um, kinesio tapes and also the application method and pattern makes a difference as well. So I would recommend that you speak to your provider uh, about the option of tapes but I personally would not recommend just going out and doing it yourself. About the expansion then, so I started activating the device and actively expanding my upper jaw five days after the SARP surgery, um, which is what the uh, surgeon recommended. So have the surgery, wait five days, then start activating the device. So they didn't do any expansion during the surgery, um, only after five days. And I turned the I turned the key or I activated the device twice a day for eleven days, and each turn is a quarter of a millimeter. So turning it twice per day means one millimeter per day. I turned it for eleven days, so that means in total I expanded this device by eleven millimeters. Uh, the reason for that, when the orthodontist did the measurements and stuff like that, he estimated that I would probably need to expand the upper jaw by six millimeters. Then he said that there's about 30% relapse that you need to account for. Plus, I also have, I like my upper teeth are, are very flared out and my lower teeth are very flared in. So you had to do some calculations for once I have the braces and they're straightened and they're not tilting anymore to check that it would still be appropriate then. And I also was um, given a lower jaw expander as well, just to expand that very slightly um, and make that uh, more suitable for me, my body. Just very, very briefly, because again, people have asked me about this. My orthodontist, who is, is German, I live in Germany, calls this thing for the lower jaw a bite plate, but it's not actually a bite plate. Like when I look up what a bite plate is, that's, that's not what it is. It's not about pushing like my top teeth. It's not designed to be bitten against. What it actually is, it's basically like a holly retainer, except it, it's, it, it's like a combination of a holly retainer and a palatal expansion device in terms of that it's got the acrylic and the metal wire, but it also um, has a, a screw functionality to expand. Yes, there's no mid structure to actually expand the lower jaw, but what jaw expanders do is, is they actually, they, they shift the teeth. So it's not about tilting the teeth, it's about moving them, okay? So that's why it was originally calculated six millimeters, but I've actually expanded for 11. That has gone very well, didn't have any problems with that. 
at all and now I'm in the sort of um, I guess you could call it a retention phase where you need to keep the device in to allow the bone to form sufficiently before you move on to the next step which would be braces. So we're estimating that I'll need to keep this in for six to nine months. We need to see how it goes um, and I will go back to my orthodontist to check in on that in October. I have been taking progress pictures along the way so I will do a little time lapse of the actual expansion rather than going into showing you all the stuff right now and um, I will actually separate that off into a separate video so um, that's easy to just watch as a standalone so um, I'll link to that and remind you about it at the end. So now coming back to eating and sort of dealing with having this device in <sighs> You know, I said to myself when I was planning to record this video that I would need to check on the name of another YouTuber whose videos I watched so that I could reference him here. And of course, I completely forgot until right now. Uh, I'm very, very sorry, <laughs> but I will include a link to someone else's channel in the description. He also has some videos about SARP. They're quite, they're quite entertaining. He's got a very nice style. Um, so check out the description to go and watch his videos um, and let him know that I sent you. But basically he said in one of his videos that like he could eat steak after like a week of having his SARP surgery. And I was like, oh, that's quite nice. This is, you know, good. Um, sorry, pal, but that's not true. <laughs> I mean, it might have been true for you, of course, but for me, no, it's not been that way. So technically, medically, like the advice from the surgeon was that I could eat normally straight away. I didn't need to do any sort of dietary adjustment. In reality, that ain't the f***ing tea. Because one, the, the device takes some getting used to. It's, it's very hard to chew and move your tongue around and move the food around. And stuff gets stuck and things like that. So that's an ongoing impracticality but more than that is that I mean obviously with SARP surgery they're carrying your jaw right so even though the surgeon said that it was safe to eat normally I did not feel comfortable to be able to eat normally for at least two weeks I think it was only going into the third week where I felt brave enough to experiment with different soft and solid foods and I've sort of been like working my way up and seeing like what I can manage and just again while the bone reforms now that I have stopped activating the device so the body really has a chance um, to to recover there. I don't see myself trying steak anytime soon. I did have let's say a minor, not complication, but hiccup with the device in terms of that at some point when I was brave enough to try soft foods, I tried very, very soft noodles and I just like very lightly bit down on the one contact point that I had. And um, that's another reason why eating is hard because you lose your contact points. You literally don't have chewing surfaces that actually line up with each other. So you can't chew food. Um, I now have managed to find two very, very small contact points, one on either side, but at the time I only had one contact point, so I was like just very, very softly chewing like really soft noodles and I felt that the molar band was moving and pushing up into my gums and cutting into my gums. But when I went for a checkup with the orthodontist, I did tell them about that. They said that it looked fine, but I told them like, I can feel it. So they added some more um, of the dental cement to like bond it some more and make it more stable. And that has helped. So that's good that that is kind of like solved for me now. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, oh my goodness, and talk about the pain. So the, the SARP expansion actually activating the device, that doesn't hurt at all. I was a little bit skeptical when I'd seen people say that it doesn't hurt. I thought that it would at least feel weird. Um, it doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't feel weird. The only thing that maybe makes you feel a bit nervous is you can feel the stiffness of the device as you turn it. Um, but that's in your hand, not in your jaw. So for me, it was actually absolutely fine. Some people talk about hearing at some point, like a little pop or a crack. 
I didn't hear that at all. Uh, that was fine for me. And even after the surgery itself, I was not in any pain at all, which is nice. Obviously I was on painkillers. When I was in the hospital, I only spent two nights there. They did give me painkillers, but I'm not sure exactly what kind of painkillers they were. It was in tablet form and I tried to read it on the tablet. Um, but they only gave me one at a time so I couldn't see where I actually was and then when I left the hospital I was just taking ibuprofen three times a day. I was allowed to take up to four but I only felt like I needed it up to three times a day. There were a couple of periods where I started to feel really unwell and taking the pain killer helped even though I wasn't in pain. So that was quite interesting and I think after a week I'd already stopped taking them. Two at max but I didn't take them for very long so that was really good. And actually talking about numbness, so I'm completely normal in the bottom half which makes sense. But on the top jaw I was numb pretty much all over, both in the jaw, the gums and the top lip. It's been st The feeling has been slowly, slowly coming back but there's definitely still a section at the front um, where I am numb, uh, which does make brushing a little bit difficult because I use feeling to sense, you know, how well I'm kind of cupping the teeth as I brush, especially in the inside surface. So that's been interesting. I've, I've had to look more in the mirror um, to make sure I'm doing that correctly. Um, but that's normal. The surgeon said it can take up to one to two years to, to for the feeling to come back but she doesn't think it'll take that long in my case and yeah as I say it has been coming back so I'm not too concerned about that and then just backtracking a little bit and releasing that to the eating I expected the numbness in the lips to make eating really difficult just because of um, after I had my wisdom teeth removed but actually it's not been too bad because I can still feel uh, in the lower lip so that's been fine. Another small thing as well, so as I say, the surgery itself went well, the expansion has been going well, but unfortunately I have developed some sort of infection on the left hand side, on the tooth with the molar band at the front. I'm not going to show any pictures because of where it is and the angle in the lip, it's really hard to get a picture of it. Um, but it's infected along the gum line and the gum is receding up um, which is quite worrying for me. Short story is that unfortunately the surgeon and the orthodontist aren't really sure where the infection is coming from. Based on the x-rays they don't think it was a result of the surgery. They think that it might be because of the molar band because it's like shoved up so high but they're not sure and of course we can't just take out the device so there's nothing we can do to really look at it and they said that worst case I would lose a tooth so that's not f***ing good. I already did a full course of antibiotics, it didn't make any difference. I'm now um, in week two of using chlorhexidine mouthwash twice a day so let's see if that improves the situation. Certainly in the first week I didn't feel like it was at all. I'm now halfway through the second week. Maybe it's getting a little bit better, but it's hard to tell, you need to check it all the time. So I'm obviously not happy about that, but I don't think it was because of like someone doing something wrong. It's just one of the risks, you know, you're having invasive surgeries you may end up with an infection so um, I'm not worrying about it too much in terms of like the worst case scenario of losing a tooth. Obviously I don't want to lose a tooth but there's nothing I can do about it right now except to continue with the treatment plan um, that I've been given which is you know I finished the antibiotics now I'm doing the mouth off and then just see what happens and I have a check up with the surgeon next week well, we'll see how that's going and how to proceed. They did try and do a test to see if that tooth was still alive and um, with, with like a cold thing to see if I could feel it. But because I'm still numb, I can't feel anything. So that's unfortunate. Um, but when I go back next week, we're hoping that I can feel enough. 
um, that we'll be able to check whether it's alive. And yeah, as I say, the good thing about it is that <laughs> my, my guess is that if I could feel, it would probably be quite sore, but I can't feel, I'm still numb, so it's not bothering me. Look on the bright side, I suppose. Another aspect of things is the mental health side of stuff. I mentioned earlier about how I've realised <laughs> how often I would prefer to be non-verbal. I think a lot of people would take that as like a bad sign that like something is wrong or whatever. For me, I think it's just my usual preference, but it's just that normal day-to-day -day life and having to go to work means that I can't be non-verbal when I want to. But since I've been off and I just returned to work this week, yeah, that was, that was nice for me to feel like I had more of an option to not talk. In terms of, you know, how, how I'm dealing with things mentally, it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, which is nice. You know, when I had some of my other surgeries, like right before I recorded my other video about mental health and jaw surgery, like that was a really, really bad time. And especially because I was still working all the way through that, whereas this time I've been off of work. So I haven't had to concentrate on that and get stressed by that. So that has been really, really good. And yeah, returning to work this week, my main focus is to make sure that I don't get back in that position, uh, to do and approach things differently, to uh, avoid the stress and the burnout that I was experiencing before, so that I so that I can heal better, you know? So um, that's been not too bad at all. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found the video helpful, like, share, comment, subscribe for more. And go and check out then the time lapse of the expansion to see how I've made myself gap tooth. Alright, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.